the United States is not allowing Hans Blix or his weapons inspectors back into Iraq to resume the search for weapons of mass destruction. The wealth of material collected by his inspectors has not been called on by the US search team. Yet Dr Blix says he was shocked at the quality of the intelligence material he received from the Americans and British. Dr Hans Blix, thanks for joining us on Foreign Correspondent. When you look at the intelligence material, the information that you received from the British and the Americans, were you convinced that Iraq still possessed weapons of mass destruction and that they posed a clear and present danger? No, you see, we had a more prudent attitude and I want to have evidence. And of course we were aware that there were lots of things unaccounted for. That of course could mean, could mean that they had hidden it somewhere. They could be somewhere, but it was not evidence. And that's why I warned against the idea of, of jumping to the conclusion that something that is unaccounted for does not uh, th exist. That's not certain. That still is to be found out. We cannot exclude it. And the uh, ally coalition is urging us to have patience. Well, maybe they'll find something they have not found very much yet at any rate. If you look at the interpretation that the Americans took on their intelligence material, we can't exclude the notion that Iraq did have and does have weapons of mass destruction no. and that they did pose a clear and present danger. Isn't that true? No, that's possible. They, they, they could have them. And uh, if they assumed that they had them, well, then they could pose a danger, though Iraq as a whole, of course, could not pose the same danger in 2003 as they did in 1991. I mean, the army was a fraction of what they have in the past. No one believed that today they would have any nuclear weapon. So it must have been a much smaller danger than they were in the past. If Saddam had nothing to hide, had no weapons of mass destruction, he could have opened the doors. Do you believe that the US is right in interpreting his actions as, as those of a man who, who has something to hide and that that something was weapons of mass destruction? Well, if, time, if in due course no one finds anything, then that interpretation was wrong then you have to find some other reason why they behaved as they did. And there can be several ideas in this regard. I think my favorite speculation or hypothesis would be pride, that they felt these are imposters, these are international inspectors, and uh, we are a proud people. We have had to accept them, but not one inch more than they, the resolutions really require and hence a very rigid a attitude against them. While your inspectors were in Iraq, the US did give you tips as to sites, locations. None of those turned up weapons of mass destruction and you've been surprised and said you were surprised that that was the case. Do you believe the information they gave you was good information? We got a, got a good many tips as to sites to go to and we went to many of them, but in only in three of those cases did we find anything. And in none of these cases was it weapons of mass destruction. So that shook me a bit, I admit. And, and uh, that was also a reason why I said, I stated publicly in the Security Council that intelligence had not led us there. This means no negative attitude to intelligence. I think it's necessary. And but it's a difficult job they have. But if their intelligence material, the intelligence tip-offs they gave you, led you to nothing substantial, mm. right. does it now make you doubt the value of the intelligence material that they used to justify this war? I think one will always have to look at it in a critical sense, just as a, a court will always look at evidence presented to it in a critical mind. And we did that at all times. Can you describe for me then your, the sentiments that you were feeling in those last days when you were realising that time really was running out? Was, this, was it a sense of frustration or were you quite resigned to the circumstances? Well, somewhere in between, I would say. I mean, it, of course, I would have loved to go on and to find out and to achieve a peaceful solution of this. And I think it would be paradoxical if eventually they find out that there, there is nothing. Uh, they had many other reasons to go to war, we now learn. I mean, the, the weapons of mass destruction was the one that was projected, and I, th I think it was real, but they, we hear many other reasons at, at the moment. Maybe something good will come out of it, but a lot of people have died as well, and a lot of negative th things come out as well. I mean, inspection is a very in inexpensive way of going about things. They cost like $80 million a year, and the, the what the Americans are doing in the war perhaps cost $80 billion. So it's much cheaper in terms of money, but also much cheaper in terms of, of loss of life. Do you suspect that the inspectors would be allowed back in once you go, that perhaps you're the barrier 
to the U.S. allowing inspectors back into Iraq? Well, I'm not so sure. I think, I mean, I, I, I think it's been said on the American side that it's nothing personal. Do you think perhaps your crime, though, in the eyes of the U.S., was that you were too independent? You didn't do enough of what yes. the U.S. wanted you to do? Yes. Uh, 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 yes. What do you now hope will happen in the search for weapons of mass destruction in Iraq? Well, I, I can't say I hope they find something. If there is something, I would wish them to find it. But it's not that I'm longing to find it. I mean, it, it's, it's plausible that there is nothing. So I hope that my hope would be that truth will come out, that we'll have something convincing. And do you still believe that UN inspectors must go in at some stage to verify whatever it is the U.S. finds? Well, if they find 200 tons of mustard gas and a big sample of various biological weapons and put it on the table, and that could be un incontrovertible evidence, uh, fine. But if they find ambiguous things like the trucks that you now have or they're talking about the t aluminum tubes, etc., then I think that the credibility would be much greater if they had international e expertise, not selected by them, but selected by an impartial organization. Dr. Blix, thanks for joining us.